Hello, I'm Matthias Lohr, Head of R&D here at Resesalt. And in this video, I would like to go into some details why our Pathways Transponder is actually a very robust product. So many of you probably know when we started selling passive transponders, we were using standard dog bones like everyone else. And the question is, where are the differences if you have a custom transponder and what uh, is the benefit for a race timekeeper? So the question first is, how is this actually constructed? So if you look at the details of the layers, you will find that there is a bottom layer, which is a foil, typically a PE foil, plastic. And then on top of that, you have a um, aluminum antenna, I'll do that in red here, which has a little gap in the middle and which picks up the RF signal. And then on top of that again, you typically have your actual RFIC chip, looks a little bit like this, it's typically in black, and that is at, um, glued to the aluminum antenna with some conductive adhesive, like this. So this is the typical dog bone or whatever transponder which is used for logistics applications. And the main goal here is to be as cheap as possible for the production company. Now, adding some more details here, typically what um, you will find on a um, transponder is some more adhesive here on the back of the transponder. And then you will probably put this on a bib. Okay, so this is actually your Tyvek or whatever your bib is made of. So the transponder sticks to the bib with the adhesive and the chip sticks to the aluminum with the adhesive. And now if you look at this, you may raise a question. Raise a question we, what about this chip here? It's actually exposed. There's nothing protecting the chip. And that's actually the case with these dog bones here. So if you put nothing on the chip, that chip is exposed to the outside. And not only that, also the chip is quite sensitive to bending. So I would like to show you some pictures of what happens to a chip like that if it's bent. Looking at the chip in detail under a microscope will look something like this. So here you can see the foil, the aluminum, the chip. You can actually barely see it, but you can see there's a rectangular chip here. And this black potting here, this is actually the adhesive holding the chip on the aluminum. So this is a good chip. This is actually one of those two here. And if you bend it a little bit, this happens. Here you see a crack forming through the chip. And this is because the chip is actually very brittle. It's not made for bending. And actually this chip's already dead. This is not going to work anymore, but it can get even worse if you continuously bend it like it would be done on the back of a bib at a marathon. What can happen that at the end of the marathon looks like this, where the chip is actually missing. You only have the two parts sticking to the adhesive, but the center part of the chip is completely missing. Obviously, this will not be detected at the finish line. Now, the question is, how is the racesile transponder constructed? So looking at this here, probably I'm not telling you anything new, but we have another sheet on here, which is actually our foam. And yes, this foam main purpose is to create some distance between the antenna and the human body. But the secondary benefit of that foam is that it protects the chip and it gives the whole sandwich structure more rigidity against bending. Now I could just tell you this and you would have to believe me, but we have actually done some testing and actually not, not only us, but we had some external laboratories testing our chips. So this here is a machine made to test passive transponders and especially 
test their robustness against bending. I'll show a little video. It just has a spool running in circles all the time with transponders on them. Running fairly quickly, down here there is an antenna measuring the, the transponder's performance all the time. And back here there is a roller construction applying what they call nip force to it, um, pressing on the bent transponder, creating maximum mechanical stress. And if we look at that roller construction here, you can actually see this roller here is pressed on this roller where the chips go through and they can tune the pressure of how much mechanical force is applied to the chip. And actually testing our transponders, they maxed out the machine, applied the maximum pressure and even after hours of running our transponders, they were not able to break any of our chips. So they have seen quite a lot of passive transponders and their conclusion was that our transponders are second to none if you look at the robustness from a perspective of a mechanical and bending robustness. And that's why we actually don't see any failures of our transponders during races. And we believe this gives you a huge advantage because it means that you can rely on a single result transponder on your events even under very harsh conditions. Thanks for watching.